Hey everyone, it's Michael with Color Cubic, and we're back again with the second installment of our 3D packaging tutorial. Now, where we left off last time, we had just finished importing the outline of our package shape from Adobe Illustrator into Cinema 4D, at which point Cinema 4D recognized that outline as spline paths. Then we nested those spline paths into an extrude NURBS, which essentially acted as a fill for our package shape. And then, if you remember, we converted that package shape into an editable object. And then we placed a texture, which would be utilized as a texture map, for us to place our artwork on. So that's essentially where we left off. So uh, if everyone's ready, we can jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and just select our new package here. Uh, and up here in our objects panel, which is where we're working from, uh, in the layout section, go ahead and select this drop-down menu and come to BP UV Edit. Go ahead and select that and it'll convert the layout of Cinema 4D. And this is okay, uh, it's just, this is essentially just a layout for texturing or defining a texture map for our shape, which is what we need to do now. So if you come over here to our UV Polygon section, go ahead and select that. And this is specifically for our surface polygons, which is all we're texturing. So if you go ahead and just select that, and then come over here to our Paint Setup Wizard. Now, before we do anything, we want to deselect uh, everything in this menu. And then just select New Package. The reason we deselect everything first is because we want to ensure that we're not uh, defining anything else that needs to be texture mapped. It's just this one file, this one object. So after you've done that, go ahead and just click Next. And since we're defining the surface shape and we're not dealing with a sphere or anything, uh, optimal cubic mapping is what we would prefer to use. So go ahead and click Next. Now here, what we want to do is we want to define the min and max shape and size of our, of our texture. So I, I usually like to define it no less than 2,000. Uh, and this just ensures that whatever... Uh, whatever graphics we use, whatever design we use that we apply, that it doesn't dither. And uh, because essentially... And click close. So right away, if you just, um, if you're still selecting new package, if you come here to the perspective window, and if you're on a Mac, uh, click Command A. If you're on a PC, Control A. And over here in this window to the right, you can see that Cinema 4D tried its best to arrange the all of the components of the package. And that's okay. You can certainly texture the package this way, but um, there's a better way of doing it. It's a lot faster. Um, this doesn't always work for whatever you're, you're texturing, but in this instance, this will work. Uh, so if you come down here to the UV mapping in the projection section and you just click flat and what that'll do is it'll define, it'll essentially reassemble our package, the shape of it, and it'll define uh, the package dimension so it's edge to edge, top to bottom, left to right. And that's precisely what we want because after this we'll be going into Illustrator and essentially defining our package design and uh, we'll also need to adjust the canvas so it mirrors that the package shape is edge to edge. So without further delay, <laughs> let's go ahead and come up here to layer and select new layer and then come back to layer again and select fill polygons. And so this is essentially acting as our texture map. And now come over here to file and select save texture as click OK. And because we already named our material to new package material, we just want to save it in our new package uh, section, wherever you're saving your, uh, your, your project for this tutorial, and go ahead and just click Save. And so now we're done with this section. We can go back to our standard view. So if you come up here to Layout and select the drop-down menu, go ahead and just select Standard and that'll bring you back to the standard view in the perspective window. So now if you just click the model tab, 
that'll re-enable the scene so now you can work in the scene again. Uh, real quick, before we jump into uh, Adobe Illustrator, I also want to say, if you're working, if, essentially if this is your first time working in Cinema 4D, um, I should have mentioned this in, in the first video, uh, you know, I'm, I'm toggling, I'm rotating this object uh, by holding the Alt Option key, holding that key down, and then clicking and dragging my mouse back and forth so it rotates. And you can do that wherever you click and drag, as long as you're holding the Alt Option key. So you can rotate the object. And this is a really helpful tip instead of utilizing these tools up here, which um, this rotation tool essentially does the exact same thing. But um, yeah, that's just a little helpful tip. And uh, for those who are new to Cinema 4D, this is essentially where those move tools are located, right here, these three. This kind of goes left to right, top to bottom. This zooms in and out, and this is the rotation. Or alternatively, you can select Alt Option and click and drag with your mouse, and that'll rotate as well. So just a quick little tip for those of you who are new to Cinema 4D. And that's uh, pretty helpful. Um, also, real quick, before we jump back into Illustrator, let's go ahead and save our progress as well. So now we can jump back into Illustrator. And I already have uh, my new package shape opened. but So you, you essentially want to find where your new package shape is saved. Because if you remember, we created a duplicate for the outline. So go ahead and just open the original package shape. And uh, that should come up here. And once you have that, you want to just take this time to uh, design an, whatever artwork you want to design uh, for your package. And it, it doesn't need to be anything, you know, uh, it doesn't need to be anything special. It's just, this is just for the sake of the tutorial, for the exercise. So you, you can familiarize yourself with the process. So I'm going to go ahead and just pause the video right now. And uh, you can do that too. And just... Take the time to, you know, design whatever you want. And then when we come back, we can go ahead and apply our design, uh, save it to the dimensions we need, and we'll apply it to our texture map that we exported from Cinema 4D. All right, so I'm just going to pause the video real quick, and uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Talk to you soon. All right, we're back, and hopefully by now you've had a chance to design your artwork on your custom package shape. As you can see here, this is what I threw together for mine. So now that we've done that, let's come over here to our artboard tool. And with that selected, we're going to take the edge of our canvas and we're just going to click and drag so the edge snaps in place to the edge of our package. So that should be perfectly adjacent. And we just want to make sure to do that for the left and right and top and bottom. Now, uh, if yours isn't snapping in place, don't sweat it too much. Just come up here to View, and come down here to Snap to Point, just to make sure that's enabled. And that should ensure that the edge of your canvas snaps in place to the edge of your package. Now, the reason we're doing this is because when we exported our texture map from Cinema 4D, the canvas that our custom package shape was defined in was edge to edge. So essentially, we're just emulating those dimensions here. So now that we've done that, let's come up here to File, Export, and Save for Web. Now I'm just going to click the original tab, and I'm going to come over here to GIF in our drop-down menu. It should have, uh, by default, be GIF. Um, you want to click the drop-down menu and select PNG. And just make sure that transparency is checked. And now I'm going to come down here to Image Size, and I'm going to change the width to 2000. And go ahead and just tab out of that, and that should propagate over here. There we go. Now the reason we're doing that is because when we were defining the max width and height of our uh, custom package shape and texture in Cinema 4D, we, we actually changed it so the max width and height was 2000. So really, we're just emulating those dimensions in here as well. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just click Save. And you just want to make sure that you save this PNG 
in the same folder where all of your other project files for the scene are saved. So go ahead and save that. And now that we've done that, let's go to that same folder where all of our project files are saved. And we want to go to our texture map that we exported from Cinema 4D. So find where that is. Now I had saved mine as new packaging material underscore color, and it's saved as a TIFF file. So uh, by default, Cinema 4D should save it as a TIFF file, but if it didn't, it may have saved it as a PSD or a JPEG, whatever it saved it as. Go ahead and just right click the file, open with, and make sure you select Photoshop. And there we go. So now that that's open, let's come over here to File, and come down here to Place Embedded. And we want to come over here to the artwork that we just exported from Adobe Illustrator, and we want to place that in our custom packaging material, our texture map. Now, uh, right away you can see that the left and right, those are perfectly edge to edge. But the top and bottom aren't, and that's okay. We just need to skew these a little bit so they snap in place, so it's edge to edge. So go ahead and just adjust those so they're edge to edge, then click Enter once you're done. Now, you might be asking, why are we doing this? Because that's, that's going to cause the image to skew. Uh, and here, yes, that will skew the image. But once we, once we actually import this into Cinema 4D, uh, because our dimensions for our package are uh, exact, you know, we, we imported those dimensions directly from Illustrator, uh, it'll, it'll uh, adjust the dimensions and essentially truncate uh, the, the texture so it's, it's perfectly adjusted. It won't, be, uh, it won't be skewed like this. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really ridiculous way of explaining that, but um, that's the best I got. <laughs> So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and just uh, let's go ahead and disable our our fill, that white fill, so that doesn't show through at all. It's just our artwork. And now come up here to File, Save As, and we want to save this as a, a copy. So I'm going to save my copy as New Packaging Material Underscore Color Underscore Two. And you want to make sure that this is saved in the same location where all of our other project files for our scene are saved. And you also want to make sure that the, the format that you're saving it as matches the format of your original texture map. So in this case, mine was a TIFF file, so I'm saving mine as a TIFF file. Go ahead and just click Save and OK. So now that we're done with that, we can jump back into Cinema 4D. So now that we're in here, you want to come up here to our object for our new package. Make sure that's selected. And go ahead and just double click our texture. So as you can see by these thumbnails, our texture has been mapped to the shape of our, of our custom package. And that's precisely what we wanted. Now we just need to swap out this texture map for that duplicate that we just saved. So to do that, come over here to this button here with the three dots. Click that and come to your folder where all of your project files are saved for the scene. And let's come to the duplicate we just saved with our artwork. So make sure that's selected and click open. And as you can see here, it mapped our original artwork onto our custom package shape. And this is precisely what we want. And as you can see, this isn't skewed anymore either. Now there's a few things I want to adjust with this, because the front, that looks great. But if we just rotate this around, you can see that the artwork is being mirrored on the back. Now some of you might not care, but for those of you that do, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the back isn't reflecting, it's not mirroring the artwork, that the artwork is only appearing on the front, because you know if this were real, if this were a real package, like being die cut and printed, uh, it would only be printed on one side at a time, and chances are whoever designed this isn't going to create a mirrored design for the back. Somebody might, but uh, chances are that's not going to happen. It's not going to be that common. So we can actually fix this by coming up to our new package object and come to our material to select that once. Now if you come down here to projection, you can see it's UV mapping. 
and that's great. But for side, it's set as both. And what we want to do is we want to click that and we want to set it so it's just front. So now if we rotate our package, you can see the back doesn't have that mirrored uh, artwork. Now we can take this a step further by coming over here to create new material and we can just, uh, whoops, click and drag that new material. Sorry about that. And uh, now there's a hierarchy to this so you can see that our artwork disappeared. So you want to come up to this new material we just created. Now click and drag that to the left of our new artwork. Now our artwork's back and you can see that the back is that new material. Now we can get more specific with this by selecting that new material, just select it once, and come down here to side and change both to back. And now we can double click that new material and we can change this color to whatever we're whatever we want to change it to. Now uh, I'm going to come into Illustrator real quick and I'm just going to sample the color of this package because I think that'll look good. So, all right, there we go. So that's 27, 117, and 188. So that looks pretty good to me. Now you can you can change yours to whatever you like, but uh, just to can this just gives you an idea of how you can adjust that. So now that we've done this, I feel like this is actually a pretty good place to stop. So just to recap, what we've covered in this video is we really just we defined a texture map for our custom package shape in Cinema 4D. And then we applied our custom artwork to that texture map. We did that through utilizing uh, Illustrator to adjust the canvas so it matched the export from Cinema 4D. And then we placed that on the texture map in Photoshop. And then we just saved a duplicate. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments about uh, this portion of the tutorial, you know, feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section, and I'll try to reply to those as soon as I can. In the next video, uh, what we'll be covering is essentially breaking apart our custom package so all of the individual components are organized as they should be. And in that same tutorial, we'll, we'll most likely cover adjusting the rotation axis of the package to ensure that when this assembles, everything is folding the way it should be. So yeah, if you, uh, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll be following up with the third installment of our 3D custom package design. So sit tight, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.